today we are discussing the chapter plan kingdom and it carries about four to six questions for our neat examination and it is a very important chapter with many examples and in the first part of the chapter that deals with the a different system classification and we have got a brief idea about uh, uh, classification in the uh, first chapter living world also and uh, here uh, artificial system classification the artificial system classification that give equal weight to both vegetative and also sexual character vegetative character and also sexual characters are concerned for the artificial system classification and the example is linear system classification that is proposed in the 18th century and the second one is natural system classification it is based on natural affinities it is based on natural affinities that is here in addition to external characters like morphological character we are giving the internal characters such as anatomical character embryological character and also phytochemical characters are concerned for the classification so the second system classification is natural system natural affinities natural relationship are, are concerned in addition to the morphological character the anatomical character embryological and phytochemical characters are used for the system of classification and the examples for natural system classification are bandhavanukar classification and bandhavanukar classification also we have discussed in the last chapter living world and the bandhavanukar classification or bh system of classification uh, which give a elaborate classification for phanerogams or seed plants and here uh angiosperms are divided into 199 family and gymnosperms into three family and total families present in the bandhavanukar classification is 202 families and the third system classification is phylogenetic system classification and in the phylogenetic system classification the evolutionary trends evolutionary characters are evolutionary relationships are concerned for the system of classification and the examples for uh, phylogenetic system of classification are engler and prangles classification and mitakers vikingen classification engler and prangles system of classification and also mitakers classification are the example for phylogenetic system so the the basic three systems of classification are one is artificial system which give equal weight to vegetative and also sexual character example is linear system don't forget to study the example because that is asking in the examination so the second one is natural system of classification and here the natural affinities are concerned and in addition to external character anatomical embryological phytochemical characters are also considered example is bandhavanukar uh, classification third one is when we are using when we are considering the evolutionary trends uh, the system of classification is phylogenetic system the examples are engler and prandtl classification and also wittakers phylogenetic classification and in new, uh, modern days we are using the different other system that is numerical taxonomy numerical taxonomy uh the the numerals or the number and codes are assigned for each organism and by using the computational technique we are classifying different organism and numerical taxonomy is also called as phenetics the term phenetics was introduced by e anderson the term phenetics was introduced by e anderson and the number and codes are assigned for each organism and that is used in the classification and the second is Uh, cyto taxonomy cyto taxonomy uh, that is cytological characters like uh, chromosomal character chromosomal behavior chromosomal number are used in the system of classification and such classification is called as cyto taxonomy and next is when we are considering the chemical constituents it is called as chemo taxonomy when we are using uh, an, uh, the system of classification we are using the chemical constituents of each organism such classification is called as chemo taxonomy and in the molecular taxonomy that is the modern system of classification the most modern and that is molecular taxonomy the chromosome not only chromosomal the dna or rna sequences are used for classification one of the example is three domain classification it is also called as six kingdom classification proposed by carl boos carl boos and here we are using r rna analysis for the system classification and in this classification the total living world is divided into three domain pro archaea three domain archaea and uh, prokaryota and uh, eukaryota three domain and uh, here we are divided into six kingdom 
and the six kingdom is one is archaea then monera protista fungi plant and uh, animalia that is a six kingdom classification that is a recent system classification based on the molecular characters so this is the first part of the chapter dealing with the different system and now we can move into the uh, detailed study of plant kingdom and plant kingdom is divided into uh, different divisions like uh, algae, bryophyta, pedophyta, gymnosperm and uh, angiosperm. So the outline of plant kingdom are plant kingdom is divided into different uh, divisions like algae, bryophyta, pedophyta, gymnosperm and angiosperm and this is the brief uh, idea about uh, uh, plant kingdom the overall idea algae are generally thyroid in nature and these are non vascular plants the vascular system like uh, xylem and phloem is absent in algae and all algae are aquatic except the algae like uh, cephalurus cephalurus is a parasitic algae parasitic algae present in plants cephalurus all other algae are aquatic either marine or freshwater either marine or freshwater and algae is divided into different classes like chlorophyceae pheophyceae and rhodophyceae chlorophyceae pheophyceae and rhodophyceae on the basis of the major pigment and also the thyroid nature and the reproductive uh, character it is divided into chlorophyceae pheophyceae and rhodophyceae chlorophyceae is commonly called as green algae and pheophyceae is brown algae and rhodophyceae is red algae <coughs> and the major example coming under chlorophyceae as spirogyra uh, ulothrix chlamydomonas chlorella cara etc and pheophyceae the major examples are fucus ectocarpus uh, polysiphonia and in the rhodophyceae red algae the major example is uh, grazilaria grazilaria and gelidia grazilaria and gelidia and this is the first group that is they are thyroid in nature non vascular plants aquatic bryophytes are also thyroid and uh, some groups leaf like structure are also present but it is thyroid and this is also non vascular plants that is the xylem and phloem are totally absent and bryophytes are commonly called as amphibians of plant kingdom because they require water for completing uh, life cycle but they are lander plants so that's why the bryophytes are commonly uh, generally living on the wet moist shady environment and bryophyte can be divided into two divisions uh, liverworts liverworts are also called as hepaticae hepaticae and mosses liverworts and mosses and liverworts the major examples are rixia and marcantia rixia and marcantia the mosses are the examples are mosses are leaf like structures uh, are present and the example is funaria and sphagnum sphagnum is also called as peat moss peat moss and the next group is next division is pteridophyta pteridophyta is the first land plant with a vascular system this is the first tracheophyte that is an important point tracheophytes and here the leaf and stem roots are well developed when we are comparing with algae bryophyta and uh, algae and bryophyta and it is divided into four classes uh, Psyloxida, lycopsida sphenopsida and chiloxida Xylopsida is the first class and it includes the member like Xylota. Xylota. And Lycopsida, the example is uh, Lycopsida, Lycopodium, Lycopodium and also Selaginella. The examples are very important. And Sphenopsida, it is, uh, the example is Ecusita. Ecusitum and Tiloxida is the major uh, adapted plant and it is with uh, large leaves and the major examples are Adiandum, Syathea, 
ड्रायोप्टरिस चेरिस एक्सेप्टर सो द टेडोफाइटा इज डिवाइडेड इनटू फोर क्लासेस साइलोप्सिडा लाइकोप्सिडा सीनोप्सिडा एंड चीरोप्सिडा एंड जिनोस्पर्म्स आर दे आर ट्रकियोफाइट्स दैट इज विद द वास्कुलर प्लांट्स एंड दे आर बिलोंगिंग टू फेनरगम्स फेनरगम्स आर सीडेड प्लांट्स but they are producing naked seeds because here the ovule is not enclosed by ovary before and after fertilization so they are called as naked seed plants and it is divided into three order like cycadides the major member coming under cycadides is cycas and coniferides major member coming under coniferides are uh, pinus ephedra are coming under coniferides the fam family major family coming under coniferides is coniferidae and in neat is the example is neeta neeta so the gymnosperm is a tracheophyte with its vascular plant vascular system and fenrogan seed bearing plant but the seeds are naked before and after fertilization and it is divided into three order like uh, cycadides coniferides and also neeta and the uh, last division of plant kingdom is angiosperm it is a tracheophyte it is a phanerogam and it is a flowering plant and the seeds are enclosed by of fruits that is ovule is enclosed by a ovary and it is divided into two, uh, two subdivisions dicotyledonae and monocotyledonae that is dicots and monocots so this is the brief idea about uh, different king uh, different divisions of plant kingdom and we will uh, study the very uh, very detail in about uh, algae bryophyta tetrophyta with uh, the uh, thyroid nature and reproductive structure so you must be strictly follow the ncert textbook that is group algae algae are generally aquatic either fresh water or marine water and uh, their body is thalloid only some members are uh, parasitic example cephalurus and all members are photosynthetic organism and some members are present along with the body of certain animals like a sloth bear and algae may be divided into different classes on the basis of the major pigment and their thalloid nature chlorophyceae pheophyceae and rhodophyceae and chlorophyceae is green algae and they may be unicellular colonial or filamentous the major unicellular members are chlorella and chlamydomonas chlorella and chlamydomonas both are with a same structure it is a single stru cell structure with a, a cup shaped chloroplast if the flagella is present it is chlamydomonas when the flagella is absent it is chlorella and chlorella is a scp and that we have studied in the chapter microbes in human welfare and uh, chlorella is also used in the, the space travel as a food source and also oxygen source and the filamentous member is uh, olothrix pyrogyra idogonium cara etc colonial member the cells are uh, uh, aggregate and form a synombium a group of cells and that is called as a colonial form and that is present in wall box so uh, chlorella chlamydomonas are unicellular uh, colonial form is uh, uh, wall box filamentous forms are uh, eulothrix spirogyra and eudogonium and in the case of green algae uh, all other higher green plants the shape of the chloroplast is a disc shape the shape of chloroplast is discoid shape or lanceolate but in the case of green algae the shape of chloroplast are different and that is very important in the view of examination and here the chlorella or chlamydomonas they have chlorella or chlamydomonas they have a cup shaped chloroplast cup shaped chloroplast in uh, chlorella and uh, uh, chlorella and also in the case of uh, chlamydomonas but in the case of ulothrix in the case of ulothrix in the case of ulothrix it is girdle shaped structure girdle shaped structure and it is present in ulo uh, ulothrix ulothrix and in the case of spirogyra it is spirally coiled structure it is spirally coiled spirogyra it is spirally coiled and in the case of eudogonium it is network like structure network like so the and in the case of zygnema it is star shaped star shaped or stellate stellate in the case of zygnema so the shape of chloroplast is also very important in the case of uh, uh, green algae 
and you know any other algae with a changing uh, shape of chloroplast. And the next is asexual reproduction and also sexual reproduction. They are with uh, uh, flagellated uh, asexual spores like zoo spores, especially present in the case of uh, 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 a and the sexual spores may be, sexual reproduction may be isogamous, anisogamous and uh, also oogamous and they are with the flagella, they are with the apical flagella. And the chlorophyce, it is called as green algae or uh, uh, it is due to the presence of uh, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. No, any other pigment, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B are the major pigment. And there is pyrenoid, pyrenoids are in the case of, for example, when we are taking the cup-shaped chloroplast, if it is a chloroplast, there are uh, special structures for the storage of food material, storage of starch, and they are called as pyrenoid. These are membrane-bound structure, and they store st uh, starch, and it also st uh, store uh, the oil droplet and also protein in some cases. So, pyrenoids are present in green algae. So this is the basic character of uh, green algae and uh, starch is the major reserve food material present in green algae. The next group is Pheophyceae or it is also called as brown algae due to the pigments Fucosanthin. Fucosanthin is a major pigment. Fucosanthin is the major pigment and also it contains the chlorophyll A and chlorophyll C. Fucosanthin which give, it is a, a sandophyll. Uh, and it give a, a shade, uh, a, a varied shape of color from uh, green to olive, uh, sorry, yellow to olive green and that's why it is called as uh, brown algae. And uh, here the major members are ectocarpus, laminaria, sarga, some fucus etc. And ectocarpus is a filamentous uh, uh, brown algae. Filamentous brown algae is ectocarpus, that is importance. And the stored food material is laminarin or manitoid. The stored food material is laminarin, but the case of uh, chlorophyceae, the stored food material is charged. But here the stored food material is laminarin or it is also called as manitoid. And the cell wall uh, contains cellulose in the inner side and outer side. Algin is present, algin. And algin is a hydrocolloid, water holding substance, and it is very important economical. Uh, uh, means that is in the case of cosmetic and uh, preparation of jellies and also preparation of uh, cream, ice cream, we are using algin and so that is present in the outer side of the uh, cell wall and the spores are, the zoo spores and also flagella are, uh, sorry, uh, gametes are biflagellate in nature and they biflagellate and they have a uh, kidney shaped uh, this type of uh, uh, spores are present and that may be essential spore or gamete and Pheophyceae the major examples are ectocarpus, laminaria, sargasm etc. Sargasm and fucus. Fucus is very important and it is a uh, O gamus brown algae and it is also diplodic algae. We know on the basis of the life cycle pattern, the plant can be divided into three types. That is haplodic organism, haplodiplodic organism and diplodic organism. Major algae, major, majority of algae are haplodic in nature, but the only uh, uh, diplodic algae as per our NCRT that is fucus. So don't forget about fucus. It is a oogamous algae and also diplodic algae. And the third group is rhodophyceae. Rhodophyceae is commonly called as red algae. And it contains the major pigments like chlorophyll A, D, not B or C, uh, chlorophyll A, D and phycoerythrin, alpha, gamma phycoerythrin and that is giving the redness to the body. And the reserve food material is Floridian starch and structurally, the Floridian starch is structurally similar to uh, starch and the glycogen. Starch is a reserve food material present in the higher plants and glycogen is a reserve food material that is present in animal kingdom. So that shows this Floridian starch which is structurally similar to uh, starch and glycogen. It is an important point for our examination. And cell wall, uh, the cell wall that contains cellulose, uh, pectin, polysulfate ester. Cell wall that contains cellulose, pectin, and polysulfate ester, and outer side of the cell wall there is a hydrochloroidal substance, caragi. 
So keragene is present. Keragene is the hydrochloride substance, water holding substance that is present in the rhodophyceae or radarge, but algin is present in the case of pheophyceae. And the major members are polysiphonia, porphyra, gracilaria, and gelidium. And gracilaria and gelidium are economically very important because they yield agar, agar or agar. It is a, a nutrient, uh, it is a medium for bacterial tissue culture, etc. And uh, we have studied already studied in the case of uh, gel electrophoresis, agarose gel electrophoresis in the case of uh, biotechnology, that is the gel uh, separation of DNA. And the same agar, it is obtained from the gracilaria and gelidium. So, this is the basic, uh, a brief uh, comparison between uh, the three classes of algae and uh, the NCRT, uh, each diagram. Diagrams of NCRT is important because all are asked in the examination and there is a tabular uh, column about the uh, characters of uh, a comparative character of uh, uh, different uh, algae. So this is the brief idea and uh, uh, we will move into the next uh, division that is called as uh, bryophyta. Bryophytes are commonly called as amphibians of plant kingdom. They are terrestrial plants but they require water for completing their life cycle. They require water for completing life cycle because the gamete transfer will be taken place only with the help of water. Their gametes are uh, biflagellate, androzooids uh, and they require water for completing their life cycle. And they are living on the wet moist environment because they require water for their completing life cycle. So, the bryophytes are restricted to a narrow geographical region in the earth because they require water for completing their life cycle. And uh, bryophytes can be divided into different groups like mosses and liverbirds. Liverbirds are also called as the hepaticae. 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 And there are, they are thyroid in nature and small unicellular rhizoids are present and here the uh, liverworts are totally thyroid in nature but in the case of mosses uh, there is leaf like root like structure is present root like leaf like structures are present and bryophytes normally which follows haplodiplontic life cycle there is alternation of generation a haplodiplontic life cycle a, a haploid gametophytic generation is there and after that the sporophytic diploid generation will be repeat so uh, here the uh, mosses which have a leafy stage this is a leafy stage so these are leaf like stage and at the tip there is a reproductive structure this is called as gametophyte gametophyte is a plant body that is be a gametes and gametophytic generation is always haploid generation and there is the gametes are present and they undergo fertilization and after fertilization the zygote do not undergo meiosis it undergo mitosis and produce a multicellular sporophyte multicellular sporophyte so this is the sporophytic generation and sporophytic generation is always diploid and inside the sporophyte the sporophyte which have uh, three parts foot seta and capsule uh, foot seta and this is the capsule foot to seta and capsule and inside the capsule there is sporogenous tissue and the sporogenous tissue undergo meiosis and produces a uh, uh, haploid spores that haploid spores that undergo germination and produce the protonema protonema is a, a slender filamentous branch structure and this protonema germinate and develop to produce the leafy stage so in the mosses there are two stages in their life cycle one is protonema stage and also leafy stage in the gametophytic generation so in the gametophytic generation of uh, mosses it has two stages one is leaf is uh, protonema stage and protonema stage which undergo germination and produces uh, leafy stage and in the leafy stage spor sporophyte generation will be produced in the sporophyte generation spores will be produced and the spores on germination produces protonema from the protonema the leafy stage will be produced so this is the life cycle pattern of mosses and mosses which play an important role in the ecosystem development or ecological uh, ecological succession that we have studied in the chapter uh, ecosystem and 
uh, here the first group that invade in a bare area that is the primary succession is taken base that will be the pioneer species and uh, in the uh, hydra sorry xerarch region it will be lichen and after lichen the soil accumulation or soil formation will be favored by the growth of the mosses so mosses or bryophytes which give which has important role in the ecological succession the soil formation in the bare region so that is done by the bryophytes so this is about the brief idea about bryophyte and bryophyte can be divided into the, uh, the different example the, uh, as per the NCRT one is the sphagnum. Sphagnum is uh, commonly called as peat moss. Sphagnum is commonly called as peat moss. It is a source of fuel and sphagnum or peat moss is used as the, uh, uh, the, the holding substances that is during the packaging of the live material like plant body or animal material when it is packaging during the shipment the sphagnum is used as the packaging material that is very important and markantia markantia uh, the, they are they are uh, dioecious in nature both uh, male reproductive structure and female reproductive structure is present in the two plants and there is jamaica there are Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica are the characteristics of Markantia and uh, the small Jamme, multicellular uh, bud like structures are present and that is called as Jamme and the Jamme that uh, on germination produces new plants. So, uh, peach moss is Wagner and Markantia is Jamaica and Rixia and Funaria are common examples of Rixia is a uh, liverwort or hepaticae and a Funaria is a moss. Anthocyrus, another example is Anthocyrus. Andocyrus. Andocyrus is commonly called as horn wort because horn wort because the thallus has a horn like structure and uh, this is the reproductive structure of sporophytes and the thallus of the uh, andocyrus have the uh, colonies of nostoc colonies of nostoc so they have the capacity to undertake nitrogen fixation so nostoc colonies are present in the thallus of anthocyrus nostoc colonies are present in the thallus of anthocyrus so this is about the brief idea about bryophytes bryophytes are amphibians of plant kingdom but they are living in a wet moist environment and they require uh, they uh, require uh, wet moist environment that's why they are restricted to a narrow shady region narrow geographical region of the biosphere and it is divided into liver birds or hepatic and mosses and the different class divisions uh, examples are uh, peach moss, sphagnum, marcantia, jamaica, rixia, funaria, andocyros. Andocyros which have the nostoc uh, colonies or nostoc filaments in their uh, thallus so they are nitrogen fixer and they follow haplo diplodic life cycle and markantia which have the vegetative reproductive structure called jamme mosses have leafy stage and protonema and bryophytes which play an important role in the uh, ecological succession that is in the formation of soil in the uh, uh, bare habitat next division is uh, pteridophyta pteridophyta is the first land vascular plant that is the first tracheophyte, primitive tracheophyte is vascular plant and uh, 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 with the xylem and phloem is present in the tetrophytes. So tetrophytes which have most, uh, some more advanced than bryophytes and they have leaf uh, and also stem and some plants are big tree like plants are also present uh, like uh, Sayathea. Sayathea is commonly called as tree fold and uh, the, they are divided into two different uh, divisions. One is homosporous fern and also heterosporous fern. Homosporous ferns are most of the uh, most of the uh, ferns are or tetrophytes are uh, uh, which produce similar type of spores. There is no uh, differentiation into uh, male spore or female spore or microspore or megaspore, and they are producing similar type of spores. But in certain uh, groups, certain members like uh, Selaginella and Salvinia, that is very important. Salaginella and Salvinia. Salaginella and Salvinia, or it is also called as African bile. And Salaginella and Salvinia, they are heterosporic ferns. They produce microspore and megaspore. Microspore and megaspore. So in the strobilus, 
Clobilus or the uh, cone of the uh, Salaginella or uh, Salvinia, they have in the lower part they are with a large spore that is called as megaspore, and the upper tip region that is with a microspore. Small spores are present, and the these microspores which are resemble the male reproductive structure, and the lower part is with the uh, female reproductive uh, cells. And here, this is the first uh, uh, evolutionary trend towards the uh, seed habit and also the sexual dis uh, differentiation is taken place in the case of pterodophyte. That is, here in the lower part, there is a megaspore and the megaspore which, are, uh, which is the female, which resembles the female uh, spore and also microspore as the male. And heterospore and the seed habit which is present in Salaginella and Salvinia and it has very important uh, important in the uh, evolutionary development and the gametophyte of the gametophyte generation of pterodophyte uh, uh, is commonly called as prothallus and uh, prothallus is uh, not uh, it is a heart shaped structure which are rhizoids and both male reproductive organ and female reproductive organ are present in the same prothallus that's why they are called as homosporous but in only in the case of Salaginella and Salvinia they produce two different types of spores and the another importance of uh, uh, pterodophyte there is a member called azola azola is an aquatic fern it is also called as mosquito fern or a aquatic fern and the leaf cavities of azola have anabine azola uh, tedo, uh, a cyanobacteria anabine anabina azole azole Anabina azole and the uh, uh, these fixed nitrogen fi uh, nitrogen atmospheric nitrogen so azola is used as a bio fertilizer and it uh, used as a duck feed and uh, it is a nutritious protein rich food material that can be used as human food also so azola uh, the leaf cavities of azola has anabina azole and anabina azole uh, uh, are nitrogen fixer and azola is used as a bio fertilizer especially in the paddy fields and uh, we have already the first part of this chapter we have already discussed about different classes like uh, the xylopsida lycopsida sphenopsida and tyropsida don't forget about that uh, different groups so this is about uh, the brief idea about the bryophytes and the pteridophyta now we can move into the next division that is uh, gymnosperm and uh, angiosperm the next division is gymnosperm gymnosperms are normally called as naked seeded plants Gymno, the term gymno which means naked and they are, the ovules are naked before and after fertilization, no ovary, no fruits are present and gym, the smallest gymnosperm in the world is Zamia, Zamia is the, Zamia pygmia is the lar, uh, smallest gymnosperm and the largest plant that is Sequoia gigantia that is also belonging to gymnosperm. And some gymnosperms they have mycorrhizal roots, especially present in pinus. We know mycorrhizal roots are the roots uh, uh, has association with the fungus, and the fungus which enhances the absorption of nutrients, especially phosphate. So mycorrhizal roots are present in pinus, and coralloid roots. Coralloid roots are for a negatively geotropic root that grow uh, against the geotropism and growing in the surface of the soil and just like shows the structure of a uh, corals and these are present in cycles this coralloid root has the uh, colonies or filaments of no stalk it has uh, no stalk uh, filaments so they are nitrogen fixer so in gymnosperm the coralloid roots are present in the cycles and the cycle this Coralloid roots are uh, positively phototropic or uh, negatively geotropic. Negatively geotropic root uh, growing uh, along the surface of the soil. And these coralloid roots have no stock filaments and no stock, so they, uh, they are involved in the nitrogen fixation. Mycorrhizal roots, the association with the fungus which is present in pinus that enhances the absorption and the smallest gymnosperm is Zamia and the coralloid roots are present in cycles and all gymnosperms are heterosporous in the last group that is in the case of a 
uh, that uh, tetrophyta, most of the tetrophytes are uh, homosporous. Only two tetrophytes are with a heterosporic nature that is present in the Salvinia and Salaginella. But in the case of gymnosperm, all, heterospo uh, all gymnosperms are heterosporous. That is, they produce uh, the uh, male spore that is in the uh, microspore in the male strobilus or male cone and the female spore or the megaspore in the uh, female uh, strobilus or female cone. But the male strobilus and also female strobilus may be present in the same plant or in the different plant. That is, here the pinus. Pinus is a monaceous plant. Pinus is a monaceous plant. What do you mean by monaceous plant? Monaceous, which means both the male and female reproductive organ is present in the same organism. That is, male corn and female corn is or a female strobilus is present in the same plant that is called as monaceous so pinus is a monaceous plant pinus is a monaceous plant but in the case of uh, cycus cycus is dioecious that is male and female corn are present in two different plants there is a male plant and there is a female plant so in the case of gymnosperm pinus is a monaceous plant that is male corn or male strobilus is present on and a female strobilus is present on the same plant in the different branches so pinus is a monaceous plant and cycus is a dioecious plant what is dioecious plant male strobilus or the male reproductive organ is present in the uh, one plant and the female reproductive organ in the different plant that is the plant is unisexual so cycus is a dioecious plant and the common examples of this group is one is ephedra Ephedra is economically very important because it is a source of alkaloid ephedrine. Ephedrine and it is used in the preparation of uh, cup syrups. And another example that is Taxus bucketa. Taxus bucketa and which yield an alkaloid called taxol. And it is very important alkaloid and important medicine that is used in uh, chemotherapy or uh, cancer treatment. So, taxol is obtained from taxus bucketa. And another example is nichem, nichem ula. It is a climber. It is a climber, woody climber, especially present in the uh, tropical rainforest. And jingo biloba. Jingo biloba is with uh, uh, two uh, biloba leaves. It is a living fossil living fossil jingo biloba uh, pinus is also a living fossil but jingo biloba that yield a medicine that is called as jingo sir jingo sir and it is a uh, neurotic tonic and used in the uh, memory loss patients like uh, alzheimer patient to improve the brain uh, brain function so jingoser is obtained from jingo biloba and taxol is a anti cancer drug anti cancer drug that is obtained from taxos bucketa and ephedra uh, which yield the uh, uh, ephedrine alkaloid and that is used in the cancer so this is about the gymnosperm and another thing that we have already discussed about the classification of the gymnosperm gymnosperm is divided into cycloids the order cycloids and coniferides and another one is niches cycloids which include the family cycloidae and also the member is cycus the common member coniferides uh, which has a common member pinus the importance of pinus that is we have already discussed that is pinus is a monaceous plant and also pinus which have my, uh, mycorrhizal roots and pinus which have needle shaped leaf most of the gymnosperms uh, or coniferous plants which have uh, uh, needle shaped leaf because they are living in the high altitude to check the transpiration loss they have the needle shape and the sunken stomata and pinus which have another important that is the pollen grain of pinus is winged pollen grain that is the another important character winged pollen grain Winged pollen grain is present in uh, pinus. So it can travel more than 1000 of kilometer. So this is about a brief about the gymnosperm. And the last division is 
uh, angiosperm we know that it's the most advanced group of plant most diversified group of plant and also most economically important plant in all aspect medical uh, food and also other human welfare we are directly related to gymnosperm and they are flowering plants and there is the it is the fruit producing plant the ovules are enclosed by the ovary and the unique character, the many unique characters are the, but the unique character of gymnos, uh, sorry, angiosperm from the gymnosperm that is uh, double fertilization. We know uh, there is a presence of syngamy and fertilization that we will discuss in detail about sexual reproduction in flowering plant. And there is a production of triploid angiosperm. Triploid endosperm is a character because as a, as a part of a, a triple fusion, uh, as a result of triple fusion, triploid endosperms are produced in the uh, uh, angiosperm. But in the case of gymnosperm, the endosperm is, endosperm is haploid because the polar nucleo, nucleus directly develops into the uh, endosperm. So the double fertilization, we know double fertilization was discovered by S.G. Nawashin in 1898. S.G. Nawashin in 1898 in the plant Lilium and Fertilaria and it is a unique character of angiosperm. There is a presence of syngamy and also uh, triple fusion. As, and uh, as a result of triple fusion, they produce uh, triploid endosperm. And angiosperm can be divided into two groups, dicots and monocots. And we will discuss in detail about uh, morphology of flowering plants and also anatomy and uh, detail about the morphological character of dicots and monocots and also families. So this is about the brief about the kingdom, uh, plant kingdom, the chapter plant kingdom. So you must go through each and every part of the NCRT textbook, all lines and also diagrams given in the NCRT textbook because all diagrams are asked in the previous examination. Bright Education Center, Medical and Engineering Entrance Coaching Center, Hilal area, Doha, Qatar. For further inquiries, contact 3060679.